This is a true life documentary based on three UW Whitewater individuals and their unique stories about how they live with spina bifida. Through these three stories, you will see the ways in which Sean Brock, Bethany DeVault, and Esther Ziegler live their lives and how vastly different this birth defect can affect each individual. This documentary is important to educate people about spina bifida and how people born with this birth defect can positively affect people at Whitewater and around the world. Spina bifida is the most common birth defect among children born today. It affects nearly 1 in 1,000 newborns. Spina bifida is a congenital malformation in which there is something wrong with the bone in the vertebral column, exposing the spinal cord, which should be protected within the column. It is caused by the incomplete closing of the embryonic neural tube. The word spina bifida comes from the Latin spina, meaning spine, and bifida, meaning split. The three main types of spina bifida are occulta, meningocele, and myelomeningocele. Occulta is the mildest form of spina bifida. Most patients have no neurological signs or symptoms. There may be a small birthmark, dimple, or tuft of hair on the skin where the spinal defect is. A considerable number of patients with this type of spina bifida never know they have it until an imaging test taken for another reason is done. In the meningocele form of spina bifida, meninges protrude from the spinal opening and the malformation may or may not be covered by a layer of skin. Some patients with meningocele may have few or no symptoms, while others may experience symptoms similar to those of closed neural tube defects. Myelomeningocele is the most severe spina bifida type. It occurs when the spinal cord is exposed through an opening in the spine, resulting in partial or complete paralysis of the parts of the body that are below the spinal opening. The paralysis may be so severe that the affected individual is unable to walk. It is important to educate people about spina bifida and how people born with this birth defect can positively affect people at Whitewater and around the world. So Sean, tell me, what kind of spina bifida were you born with? I was born with myelomeningocele, which is uh, the most severe type of spina bifida. But I was really fortunate because I am not in a wheelchair or um, I, I be, I'm able to walk. I, I wear leg braces, but I can walk and um, I am very, very fortunate about that. Now, when your parents told you about spina bifida, what do you remember most of, of what your parents told you of how you were born with it? I didn't really realize I had spina bifida probably till I was a couple of years old. My parents told me that I had something that I would have to deal with for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And there would be some setbacks, but I would get through it. And um, with my parents' help and my sister's help, um, I would be able to overcome it. And um, I was pretty, pretty, pretty down, I would say, when I was a little kid. But I thought it was actually kind of cool also because I was, I was different from everybody else. And I can say that, that I'm different from everybody else because I was born with spina bifida. So I, th I think that's kind of a benefit that I can say. So t you were talking about, I mean, you were a little down with what you had, but then you made it a positive thing. But what were some of the biggest challenges of overcoming uh, or with spina bifida? I would probably have to say, um, there's people looking at you, like when I, when I wear shorts and stuff, or how I walk, I guess, is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, people um, sometimes come up to me and be like, yeah, you walk a little bit different. And I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I do. I, I have spina bifida, and um, I'm fine with it. But uh, yeah, um, some challenges would be walking around campus. That's another big challenge. Or putting on my braces, they're a big challenge. They, they take a while to put on, and they're kind of a pain. I have a lot of sores on my legs from them. So yeah, a lot of stuff like that. And also working out would be a, a big challenge. I love to work out with my roommate and a lot of my friends and playing basketball, stuff like that is a challenge, but I get through it. I'm pretty athletic, so. <laughs> hey, you gotta, you gotta show off those athletic skills, I mean. Uh, but with spina bifida, I mean, you talk about you know, walking around school, but how about like when you're working or something like that? How do you, how do you deal with it on a daily basis? Um, I would say like in, in an academic sense that um, it's, it's challenging. It's really challenging. Um, I, I get some help through uh, taking, taking tests and stuff, uh, getting extra time 
and um, working with CSD, Center for Students with Disability here, because there's a lot of students who have uh, different disabilities at Whitewater, including spina bifida. And um, I, uh, I'm just trying to make it a positive right now. So, and I think I have. And you talk about that with the Center for Student uh, Disabilities here at UW Whitewater. How is spina bifida, how has it really affected your academic ability and you know, socially with other people? Um, I would have to say that um, having spina bifida is obviously a struggle, but um, it, is, it, is, it is what it is. I think that um, people, people can either have half glass full or half glass empty. I'm looking at it half glass full. And um, I think that if you look at it half glass full, then you have a good outlook on life and stuff. So, yeah. Now, do you, uh, with spina bifida, are there any learning disabilities that, uh, that you may have that comes with it? There are, yeah. I do have um, problems with you know, math, science, is a lot of struggle. Um, taking tests, I have really problems taking tests and sometimes concentrating in, in a, a classroom setting. Um, I have just sometimes everybody has a short, short time that they can listen to a teacher, but sometimes that happens to me too. But I would say I've gotten through it. I've, I'm a senior right now, and I'm, I'm successful in college, so I feel. So you're about to graduate from college, uh, like you're just saying. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? I would have to say starting a family. Starting a family, I don't know where, maybe in Wisconsin. Um, I really want to be a sports broadcaster like you. <laughs> and um, maybe we'll see you may, maybe down the path one day. Um, but I really want to be a sports broadcaster for college basketball um, in 10 years or so, maybe on ESPN. That, <laughs> that's one of my favorite um, channels to watch. I watch SportsCenter all the time. So I would have to say some capacity in sports. Now, before your parents gave birth to you, Sean, did your parents know you were going to be born with spina bifida, or was it something they learned of shortly after your birth? Um, they actually knew beforehand. Uh, so I, I had a C-section, and surprisingly, or luckily, I would have to say, that uh, I did have a C-section, and if I didn't have a C-section, I could have had um, a lot worse spina bifida and a lot mm -hmm. more problems with it. So my parents um, had the prior tests um, that needed to be done to know that I had spina bifida beforehand, so they were prepared. They were a little bit shocked, but they were prepared mm -hmm. that uh, what they had to deal with throughout, throughout uh, their lives and um, helping me throughout the years. What type of spina bifida were you born with? I was born with spina bifida occulta. Um, my lesion is uh, L4, L5 area. Um, it affects mainly my legs. Um, I can't feel from about my knees down. Um, came with hydrocephalus, which means I have a, a shunt that regulates the pressure uh, between my brain and skull. Um, and I also have lordosis, which is scoliosis turned the other way, so my back curves in. Now tell me when your, your parents first told you about what spina bifida was, what do you remember most about them telling you how you were born with it? Um, we never really had a specific conversation about spina bifida, it was just kind of something that was there as part of who I was. Um, I have a sibling who has spina bifida as well, um, and it was just kind of normal for us, you know, it was never like a sit down and have a big serious conversation about it or anything. It's just kind of normal to me, you know. Now, what are your biggest challenges with with your with spina bifida? Um, I would say biggest challenges I faced were probably in middle school, junior high years. Um, I was the only kid with a noticeable physical disability uh, in my school, um, and that kind of made me stick out like a sore thumb. You know, made me um, an easy target for some bullying and clicky popular crap you know middle school drama stuff um i was bullied pretty pretty badly um from fifth through eighth grade you know but um just kind of made me a stronger better person you know um i see it as a positive now you know it kind of shaped who i am a little bit you know and developed my character pretty well you know now with spina bifida I mean, uh, people who have spina bifida, some can, some can walk, some are in a wheelchair, some mm -hmm. are on a scooter, but you are in a wheelchair, but you can walk. Uh, what do you prefer and why? Um, growing up, I lived in a non-wheelchair accessible houses, always, um, and I walk around my house. Um, I do what's called furniture walking, you know, I'll walk and 
occasionally check my balance on the table that I'm walking by or, you know, whatever. Um, but I have an awkward little waddle type thing that I do, you know, um, short distances. So around my house, around my apartment a bit, I can. Um, for longer distances, it, I just get too tired. It hurts my back, stuff like that. So uh, like around campuses between my apartment and the class buildings and the UC and stuff, I use my chair generally around campus and long distances, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but I have tried to maintain my ability to walk and stuff. It comes in pretty handy. And, and now with spina bifida, how has that affected your academic ability and uh, you socially? Um, socially, again, it kind of comes back to growing up, you know, being the, the odd kid out for a while. Um, and I think that it's affected me in, in the area of, um, you know, I, I know what a true friend is. You know, socially speaking, um, you know, you, you look for the people that you find that are truly accepting, you know, because you know what it's like um, to not be accepted based on physically looking different or having some stupid difference, you know, that people choose to judge you based on that instead of who you are. Now, you're graduating in May. I mean, it's, it's a very short time away. Mm -hmm. uh, you're almost done at UW-Whitewater. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Um, I want to work with kids with disabilities. Um, growing up, you know, in, in those middle school and junior high years that I had some problems with, you know, um, I want to get into adaptive recreation. Um, I do play wheelchair basketball. I've played since I was about 10. Um, and getting involved in wheelchair basketball dramatically affected my life, you know. Um, it was the first time that, um, Socially, I had kids around me that were like me, you know, kids around me who all had some form of disability. So there was never the problem of, you know, looking at a kid, realizing that he had a disability and having that kid be the odd man out, you know, because we all had some form of disability, you know. Um, and I want to kind of be that example for kids going through those same years that I struggled with, you know, the keep pushing and, and you can get anywhere you want, you know, give them an example of, you know, a kid who did grow up with, with a disability just like they did or are currently, you know, um, and give them kind of someone to look up to who, who gets it, you know, who understands what those situations feel like because I've been through them. So Esther, tell me, what kind of spina bifida were you born with? Um, I was born with myomeningocele spina bifida. So. Do you elaborate, elaborate a little bit what uh, myogenin cecile is? Oh, um, that's basically where you have um, like a tumor that goes at the lower of your spine and you have a bump and uh, mine was just partly open but not totally so it's kind of a combination of another type of spina bifida but that's the one they named it as. Now you are adopted. Uh, so your your actual parents you don't you didn't you don't have the chance really to ask them you know how you're born with it but how do your adoptive parent how did your adoptive parents explain to you how spina bifida affected you and what really it was? So like basically how did I come to know of yes, it? Yes. Right. Um, I can't really pinpoint a time where I, I suddenly knew it just seemed like it was always there and. Um, but I would say definitely in childhood, um, I had no clue. <laughs> like, I just was the happiest kid and um, wore my braces for everyone to see kind of thing. Um, and then when I got to middle school, somehow that magical number just suddenly, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm different, you know? Um, and. Uh, so that's really when I felt the difference and how it, how it would impact my life from there on. So Esther, what have been your biggest challenges with overcoming spina bifida throughout the years? Hmm, biggest challenges? Uh, I guess just trying to fit in um, with like the ways of society. Um, for example, looks, you know, they got the fashion magazines and the women with their um, legs, perfect, per perfectly shaped legs, and obviously with spina bifida, you're missing the critical muscles in your calves, so I don't have those type of legs that they're showing, and 
Um, I wear short leg braces, so I can't wear heels. And uh, so that makes it difficult to try to fit in because girls really like heels, it seems, especially for fancy events. Um, and I'm kind of short, so I would love the extra height. Um, but and I grew up in a house with all girls and, you know, just, I guess, the way you look, basically, just trying to look like them. Now, when you're going to school, when you're attending class, uh, when you're going to work, I mean, driving around, how do you, with spina bifida, how are you able to deal with those daily tasks? Well, I start with a segue mm -hmm. as my way of getting around to places. I can walk, too, but that helps. Um, do you prefer the segue? Yeah, it helps me get further faster. Mm -hmm. I like going fast, so <laughs> that's fun. And, um, and then from there, I, I have help through a CSD. Um, they give me accommodations like being able to uh, be late for class, so that's not such a pressure to get there, and um, extended time on tasks and stuff, et cetera. Um, and then I also have the support of my family, just talking to them about my day and anything that was like stressful related to my disability. Um, and then there are others on this, on this campus with spina bifida, and I've been able to talk with them and just relate that way. How does spina bifida, how does it affect you academically and socially? Academically, I, I'm doing well here at Whitewater, um, but spina bifida, living with it, it it's in my mind 24 seven. So it's, a, it's quite a huge distraction when you're trying to learn um, because you're worrying about what's happening with your body while the teacher is explaining how to work this equation and you know with the math or something and so you just have to learn to not be distracted by worrying about your body mm -hmm. but I've figured that out um, especially with accommodations but yeah and then socially um, that's a little tough just because you, you know I'm on the segue and you would think it would be like this cool awesome thing that just attracts people and and it does, but then it always brings up, so why do you have that thing? And then that makes it kind of awkward. Um, but once you get past that and they see me, then things get a lot better. So. Now, what do you, where do you see yourself now in 10 years? With, uh, with spina bifida, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Well, in 10 years, my, my spina bifida will be stable, it's not gonna change from here, so that'll be good. Um, maybe t um, there'll be better treatments, so actually my life might be freer too, um, less worries. And then also my goal is, t I'm gonna become a psychologist with a Spanish major, so I wanna incorporate that into my life. And with all my experiences with being adopted and being a minority and uh, having a disability, I really think I can bring that to the table as a psychologist and um, really be empathetic towards people who will need that. Now there are other students on campus w here at UW-YUR with spine bifida. How have they really, I mean, helped you uh, here getting adjusted, you know, to college and just being able to move on even with the condition? Well, I actually had a mentor last semester. Uh, I, she, did not have, she didn't have spine bifida, but Everything's there too, it's very similar. And uh, she was so helpful. She encouraged me to just keep going even when I was getting tired of like living the daily struggles, you know? Um, and she gave me resources, um, so yeah, that was good.